welcome to God's Word for today. My name is Brenda Gross. It's good to be with you. Good to be coming to you by the way of Radio WVCT 91.5 FM in Keeby, Kentucky, where victory comes through. Also, WVTN Television. That's World Victory Television Network and by the World Wide Web, www.thegospeleagle, all one word, thegospeleagle.com. It's good to have you on board. This is a day that the Lord has made and to rejoice and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And knowing that God is a good God, knowing that God is a forgiving God, and the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Praise God. God sent Jesus Christ, his son, to the earth. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. That which was lost. He said, it's the sick that needs a physician, not the whole. So if you're sick, he can be your physician. If you're poor, he said, blessed are the poor. He came to preach good news to the poor. You don't have to be poor no more. Hallelujah. The Bible says he became poor, Jesus did, so that we, we could become rich. Rich. The Bible has a lot to say about rich. There's a lot of warnings. Second Timothy has a warning for those that are rich in this world not to be high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but to be generous, be kind, willing to communicate or willing to share. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's good stuff. We need to read our Bibles. But good news for the poor. Jesus can bless you. Jesus can bless you. A lot of people measure, they measure prosperity by money. That's not the way you measure prosperity. Some people measure prosperity by money and wealth and material things. That's not the way you measure prosperity. Because Jesus said a man's life does not consist in the things which he possesses. The Bible says that you know what? It talks about people having the blessings of the Lord. It said the blessing of the Lord. The blessing makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. The blessing is what makes rich. Because you know what? If you're blessed to have good health, all your needs met, and that's scripture for that. John said, Beloved, I wish above all things you may prosper and be in health even as your own soul prospers. So as your soul prospers, then you can prosper. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you've got God on your side and you've accepted Jesus Christ and his work on the cross, well, you've prospered big time. That is prosperity. When you gain the Lord, you gain something. Praise God. And he's able to make all blessings abound toward us. And us having all sufficiency in all things, we may abound to every good work. Praise God. So it takes more than money. It takes more than material things to be really rich, rich in God. The Bible says he's given us richly all things. Why? To enjoy. To enjoy. He's given us all things, all his blessings. 
all his blessings to enjoy. But he tells us above all things, put on charity, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. The bond of perfectness or perfectness, charity is. He said there's three, faith, hope, charity. He said put on love, love. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And you know what? Sometimes we think that there's people that's so unlovable. But you know what? You can love them with the love of God. He's enabled us to love. He's given us his love to love with. We probably couldn't love them with our kind of love. Oh, no. Because sometimes you want to slap them. But you know what? He's given us his love to love them with. Praise God. Because God knew that we would need his love <laughs> to love people with. Glory to God to love people with. He said, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels. Say, why are you talking about love? I don't know. But I'm sure that I'm probably going to need some. How many notes we could all use a little more in our love walk? <laughs> I can. Use a little more in our love walk. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity or God's love, I am sound in brass or tinkling cymbal. Though I give my body to be burned, though I dole out all that I have to feed the poor and have not charity, I am nothing. So you know what? Nothing, nothing is nothing without love. Even the greatest work on earth is counted as nothing if it's not done in love. With, a, with God's love, not self-love, not loving your own self. But if it's not done in God's love, it profits nothing. It profits nothing. Because one day, my husband was talking about wood, hay, and stubble this, this morning. One day when we stand before the Lord to give an account of things done in this life, and the Bible says we're going to, the judgment seat of Christ. Every Christian will be there. I'm convinced that he will look right through us and see our motives for doing everything that we've done. We need to always, as Christians, we need to ask ourselves now, why? Why am I doing this? Or why am I not doing this? And see if God's really told us to do it. See if God's really told us to do what we're doing. It's easy. It's easy to, and, and we're motivated. I mean, when you fall in love with Jesus, you just want to do everything. Do everything for him. Lord, I want to do this for you. Lord, I want to sing for you. I'm talking about myself now. I'm talking about myself. I want to sing for you. I want to do this for you. I want to give to you, Lord. A lot of people, you know, they feel the call maybe to minister for the Lord or teach or preach or evangelize or something. And they're so excited they want to go out right away. I want to do it for you, Lord. But see, God hasn't really told them to. Yeah, you got to be, yeah. 
What God has told us to do is study to show ourselves approved. A workman that need not be ashamed. Can you be ashamed trying to do something for God that God didn't tell you to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can find yourself in that situation sometimes. Just like somebody that's not educated and, and uh, I'm talking about in the Bible. I'll say scripted. Somebody that's not scripted in the Bible knows nothing about the tactics of the enemy. Putting a suit of armor on or something like that and trying to go out and fight the devil. Do spiritual warfare. Not knowing a thing about it. Sometimes you'll find yourself whipped, defeated. Then you have to hit your knees and say, oh God, where did I go wrong? And you might find him saying, well, I never told you to do that. You wasn't ready. You wasn't ready. You're a three-year-old. You're a three-year-old. <laughs> yeah. You're not in college yet. You're three years old in the Lord. Then you come in crying and your knees skint and where you fell and skinned your elbow and bumped your head and, and start crying to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What did I do? Where did I go wrong? God said, I didn't tell you to do that. Wait on me. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. I was telling Brenda before service, the answer to 10,000 questions, be led of the Spirit. The answer to 10,000 questions, be led of the Spirit. Because when God didn't tell you to do something, don't do it. Don't do it just because you got a big idea. Well, I got this big idea. I'm going to... I'm going to go out and start a revival, or I'm going to go out and have a singing. Praise God. Did God tell you to? Well, no, we just, we've got us a, a gospel group together. Now we want to, we're going to want to go singing for the Lord. And I know you're excited. I know you want to do something for the Lord, but wait on the Lord. Wait till he tells you to. And then he can use you. If you'll wait on the Lord and let him wait till he gives you direction, then he'll be able to use you if you'll wait on him. And don't go out on your own doing your own thing just because you're excited about it. Now, I understand. But there's many things that the devil has set up along the way for new Christians and Christians that are unlearned and stuff. That's the reason it's so important to be taught in the scriptures. Sit and be taught. Go somewhere where a man or woman of God that knows something about God that is a veteran that's been through stuff can teach the Word of God because God has given them to us as gifts. As gifts. God give them to the church. Gifts. Why do you think He give them to the church? A lot of people think, well, you know, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. No, you don't. But you know what? Paul said to forsake not to assemble ourselves together because there's strength in numbers. And you know what? When God's people gets together, God is in the midst. God is in the midst when his true people get together. That's a time that revelation comes where God is using somebody to teach or preach 
revelations coming to you that you can't that you can't get on your own. I mean, it takes a long, long time because to get things on your own because it's from faith to faith, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's how revelation comes. So you know what? We need each other. The family of God needs each other. They're brothers and sisters. And you know what? If you'll do that, if you'll be faithful to God, he'll be faithful to you. And where you're supposed to be, praise God, he'll be faithful to you. You'll grow in leaps and bounds because you're doing what he told you to do. But don't go out on your own. Don't do something just because you've got a good idea and you'd like to do it. I just like to start a singing group or I just like to do this or do that. Wait on God. Wait till he tells you to. And don't move without him. Don't take a step without him. We talked about walking in the light as he is in the light this morning. When you get light on something, I'm talking about walking on a path. God's words, a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Or a light unto my feet, a lamp unto my path. Whichever way it goes. What is it, Brandon? <laughs> lamp unto my feet and light unto my path, ain't it? Praise God. Then God gives you light with each step you take toward him in his will. God will give you more light. But if he, if he gives you light, you don't take that step. You don't take, and it takes faith to take that step. Then you won't get any more light till you take that step. Now, a lot of people don't think this is true, but it's true. And the Bible bears it out. Walk in the light as he is in the light. If you want to have fellowship with him. And it says we'll have fellowship with one another. Walk in the light because Jesus is in the light. And you and Jesus can have fellowship. Well, if you don't walk in the light, you're not going to have fellowship. And how can you get in more light? You'll be walking around somewhere off the path in darkness where there's no light. And you'll have blinders on. You'll be walking around in the dark trying to feel your way. It'll be like the blind leading the blind, Jesus said, and falling into the ditch together. The blind leading the blind. The, a blind person can't lead you nowhere because they're blind themselves. How are they going to lead you? No, walk in the light where Jesus is. Thy word, thy word. Walk in it. He'll give you revelation. Walk in that light. See, yes, Lord, I receive it. I receive that light, Lord. Yep. But if you say, mm, I don't know about that now. Our church just don't believe it that way. You know, I don't know about that scripture there. You've stopped yourself. And you know what the danger is? 20 years down the road, you're still in the same place. You're still in the same place with God, the same place on that path. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light, and it gets brighter and brighter until the noonday sun, until the noonday sun. So whatever light God gives you, embrace it. Walk in it, say, yes, Lord, I take that, it's mine, I believe it. If you say it, I believe it. I don't care if I've heard 15 doctrines that, that goes against it. Yes, Lord, if your word says it, I believe it, and that settles it. I'm going to walk in it. If you'll do that, you'll get more light. So don't cut yourself off. Don't cut yourself off. Don't get off the path. Don't get off the path trying to pick roses somewhere else because they'll soon fade away. 
or daisies or whatever you get off the path picking. Stay on the right path. Stay on the path of light. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. And just because people get up and they quote scriptures, they might quote 50 scriptures. doesn't necessarily mean that they're saying what God wants them to say or that they're in the will of God. We've got to be careful about that. Because we have lot, lots of folks in churches, lots of folks on TV. They get up, they quote scriptures, and a lot of people use scriptures. But you know what? I was thinking about this scripture of the day. And my husband talked a little bit about it today. But I was thinking about when the God sits, he said, I was hungry and you, you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me, sick and in prison and you visited me. And they said, Lord, when did we do that? And, and he said, well, as, as much as you've done it to one of these, least of these, you've done it unto me. Well, he set them on his right side. And then others, he set on his left side. They said, when did we see you? You know, and those guys, he said, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. You gave me no food. Naked, you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison, you didn't visit me. So he set them on his left side. And he said, depart from me. They'll be cast out into outer darkness. Where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth, but cast out into outer darkness, prepared for the devil and his angels. My husband talked about that this morning. Then there was another group of people came up and said, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out devils in your name and done many wonderful works. And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. And I was thinking, never knew them? And they prophesied in his name? They cast out devils in his name? They done many wonderful works in his name? And then I was thinking about that and and I got some light on it. It said, in his name. There's plenty of people doing stuff in his name that he didn't commission them to do. In his name. See, God honors faith wherever it's used. God honors faith. And just because God uses a person to do those things does not does not mean that everything in that person's life is right. You say, well, what are you talking about? I'm saying that in the past that we have been misled and thinking that just because we, we, we may see a miracle or we may see something happen under somebody's hand that's had faith or let God use them to do something and we've thought everything in that, well, that person must be living right. Their life must be perfect. Mm -mm. Doesn't have to be. Because God honors his word. God honors his word always. And He's he honors faith. Because we weren't perfect when we got saved. We had to ask God to save us. We were sinners. When we believed on Jesus. So God honors faith. So I thought, huh, well, see, that's a little more light. In his name, people do stuff. In his name, people have, we've seen people do things. We've seen God move when people used the name of Jesus. And then sometimes people are just using his name, just using his name. Just say, I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing this just because I feel like doing it. I'm going to go out and do this for the Lord. 
But some of those people, he said, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. They were doing stuff in his name, but he never knew them. They never had a relationship with God. He never told them to do it. So they were deceived. They thought, well, I'm cast, I cast out devils and I prophesy and I've done many wonderful works in your name. Because they depart from me. I never knew you. They used to bother me. You know, I'd wonder, but not anymore. <laughs> I see. I see a little bit more than I used to see. Thank God. Thank God. Glory to God. Sister Deb, come bless us with a song. God is a great God. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, and I'm glad to be here, and it's always a privilege to stand up here and <clears throat> tell you what my Lord's talked to me about or things that's on my heart. Um, you know, we've got a great God. Um, it's a good thing for us all to put him first in our life, you know. Um, he loves us. He, he guides us. He protects us. And I, I can't... I couldn't believe, you know, I ever did not have him in my life. You know, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. So I uh, urge you tonight to uh, receive your Jesus, you know. Ask him into your life where you can turn to him. Sister Brenda, there's nowhere to turn anymore that you'll hear truth except to her Jesus. And he'll talk to your heart if you've got a heart to receive what he's got to say. But he's a great God. Praise God. <clears throat>
He's a great God. A great God. And he loves his children. Praise God. He loves us. And he's willing that if any comes to him, he shall in no wise cast them out. In no wise cast them out. Those that comes to him. So if we can, if you will, if you'll come to him, if you'll call on him, he will answer you. Jeremiah 33 and 3 said, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Praise God, that you know not of. I'd like to turn it over to my husband. Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can have any success against us? The answer is no, nobody, no one can have any success against us. Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me and I will answer you. Praise God. There's people that needs to call on God right now that needs to call on God time's running out and you know what you're not deceiving anybody but yourself you need to call on him while there's still time if you will he'll receive you if you'll believe on him he'll save you don't play games with God don't play games. I'd like to turn it over to my husband. We'd like to send the whole program out to Brother Herb and his family this evening. We miss Brother Herb. Yeah. He had a death and his family couldn't be here with us this evening. Yeah. And we'd like to send the whole program out to them and praying for them. Brother Kenneth Gross. Praise the Lord. Good to be here tonight. Amen. Yeah, we miss Brother Herb. He'll be here next Sunday. Praise the Lord. Well, we're, we're honored to be here tonight, and we praise God. He's just a mighty God. Wonderful, wonderful, isn't he? Yes. Thank God for saving every one of us. Aren't you glad you're saved? Yes. Amen. Amen. Brother Roger. Would you come up and testify for just a minute? Would you? We thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate you, brother. And uh, appreciate you. I want you to say a few things. I just, uh, I just want to thank the Lord uh, for saving my soul. Uh, I've been, I've been saved. I guess about going on about four years and uh, I don't know why you know I don't know why the Lord waited so long to save me which I mean he you know I've uh, I've I know I've missed out uh, on a lot of things you know in in my life and uh, but um, you know growing up and stuff and you know, I'm sure everybody's heard the same thing. Uh, when you, when, when I was younger, uh, I know other people's been through it too. Out partying, drinking, you know, not giving thought of nothing else but serving yourself. And uh, but I thank the Lord, you know, that one day, one day at church, he he got hold of me and. Uh, I felt a burning in my heart to go to that altar, and uh, I tell you what, now the the devil tried every way in the world to tell me not to go, 
he, he told me the devil was telling me everything I would have to give up. You know, he, he told me I would have to give up a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, but when I took that first step, I felt like it wasn't me anymore going to the altar. It's like everything just disappeared and, uh, and I was led by the Spirit. And I know, I know that I was saved. I know that I was saved before I hit that altar. I know I was saved when I got the first decision to step out. That was it. I mean, when, when my mind was made up is when he came into my heart and, and put the blood on me. So I just thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, uh, Brother Roger, when he was preaching there, you know, God had uh, led Peter to, I said, was it Cornelius' house? Hold. He was up there preaching. And uh, which God had spoke to Cornelius and told him, I try not to say too much about it, but I said, there's a man and his name is Peter and he said, you go get him and he's going to come and tell you what you need to hear. I'm paraphrasing. And so an angel stood before him and told him that. But anyway, here come Peter along. You know, thank God. <laughs> we need to know the ways of the Spirit. I, I, I long for us to know those things. And I long for people, the body of Christ, to know these things. The ways of the Spirit. The, how he does stuff. Peter didn't know what, why he was going there. He just knew God told him to go. God don't tell you everything. He don't have to. He don't need to. He's already got the plan. It just takes a step and then another step. And after a while, he'll have that fulfilled. And it takes faith to do it. But here's my point. When he got over there to Cornelius' house, he began to explain to them by the Spirit of God that God had sent his Son. And that through his Son, there was remission of sins. Oh, that's what they was needing to hear. That's what they's waiting on. They's waiting on that. The gospel never come to the Gentiles, but it's coming today, see. Today was the day it's coming. And when they heard that, it said as they were hearing the, the word, the Holy Ghost fell on them. And they began to speak in tongues. Well, there ain't nobody filled with the Holy Ghost that's not born again. That's, that, that don't work that way. Are you hearing? People that ain't born again don't speak in the Spirit. They got born again sitting there listening to that man. They didn't have to run up to the altar. It's what you believe in your heart. Now we practice going to the altar. That's the practice we've done. That's all right. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. Praise God for it. Amen. We practice that. But, you know, if you'll take a real good close look, a lot of things we practice is not just right in line with the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. Are you hearing? And so, boy, they're just sitting there hearing, and they believed that in their heart. They believed on Jesus while he was preaching. And while they was believing, God poured the Spirit out on them. <laughs> Amen. Wouldn't you like to see some more, some of that? Or some more of it. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank God for his word. Thank God for his goodness and his grace and his mercy. Amen. Bring back a lot, brings back a lot of memories, brother. Amen. The way God speaks to people and draws us. I told the devil when <laughs> I can't do what I was doing. In a little hole in this church, and the Lord tugging on my heart, and I just young teenager, 
young teenager. And I said, I'm going to get saved tonight. Amen. Praise God. Well, the preacher got done preaching and he gave an altar call. Man, you feel a tug and a pull. And I said, and I know a little scripture. <laughs> oh, Lordy. I said, Satan, you get behind me. <laughs> I said, you get behind me. I don't know what that means. I don't know that he's in front of me, but I told him to get behind me. <laughs> oh, Lordy. And we went on up to the altar, brother. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes people know just enough scripture to be dangerous. Amen. That might have been me. Praise the Lord. But God was a pulling, and he'd pulled for a while, and I didn't know it. And God was speaking to me for some time, and I didn't know it was him. And I, there's people like that. Amen. But uh, God is trying to, trying to get a hold of people's hearts. He loves everybody just the same. He don't love anybody less or more than others. Don't misunderstand what I said this morning. Everybody's not equal because everybody don't believe the same thing. Everybody don't get the same thing. They get because they believe God. But the love is the same for everybody. That's called God's love. Amen. He loves everybody. He said it's not his will that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. So that's the will of God for everybody. Amen. That you would come. Yeah, the devil told me too, brother. Oh, you'll have to give up all this stuff. What, that belongs to you? You can have it. You can have it back. <laughs> so you can have it back. <laughs> I don't want it. I'm done with it. Amen. Who wants anything that belongs to the devil anyway? Well, thank God we're going to get into his word tonight. Turn your Bibles open to... Uh, Second Timothy, uh, First Timothy. I'm sorry, uh, chapter six. I want to read a verse of scripture, and then I want us to go somewhere else. Now, Brenda was saying something earlier, and I think it's real good. I think it's real good. And let me let me say this to you tonight, and I want you to hear it. If God, she's talking about people are just going out and doing things and God not telling them to do things. It's not, it's not good. It's not good. But if God speaks to you and he tells you to do something and you get in faith about it, now listen to me, you'll be unstoppable. Nothing will stop you. Because God will be in the working and in the making of what you're going to do. Are you hearing? As long as you'll stay in faith, let him speak to you. You know, now let me not go there. First Timothy 6 and verse 12. He says, fight. Now, let's everyone acknowledge right now that this word of God is talking to me. Talking to me. Not the person beside me talking to me. It is the person beside me talking to me. Make it personal. Now, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Now, Amen. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. It said lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold. Somebody say lay hold. Lay hold. I'm going to lay hold on it. If I have it, I'm going to, but I have, thank God. If you have it, you can lay hold of it. 
laying hold. We ought to take our faith and lay hold of some things. Are you hearing? Now, this old religious world, you ain't going to get nothing out of it. You can forget it. You ain't getting nothing there. No, sir. Somebody say you ain't getting nothing there. No, you ain't getting nothing. Nothing but trouble. But you can take and lay hold of some stuff with your faith. Lay hold. And here in particular, it says lay hold of eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> Whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. A good profession. And that word profession is translated confession. And that's a better word for us. Not profession. That's like something you do. Confession is something you say. Amen. That's King James translation. But confession, it's the same word. So you confessed a good confession among many witnesses. Amen. I, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. See, it's the same word down here. Now they changed it down there. But it's the same thing. So he witnessed a good confession before Pontius Pilate. Now, now, now he's re referencing that. So what's he talking about here? He's talking about when Jesus was before Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate said, don't you know I can free you? Jesus said, you don't have no power. <laughs> he said, you don't have no power unless God gives it to you. Amen. He, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. He said, I've come to do the will of God, and I'm doing it. Now, amen. And that means standing right here before you. And by the way, so you know, I could call 12 legions of angels, and we'll straighten this mess out real quick, but I'm here to do the will of God. Now, I like that. And, and, and you know, he could have said some things, and, and Pontius Pilate would have let him go. He wasn't supposed to be let go. Amen. So that was a good confession. I'm here on business. I'm here doing my father's business. But it brought back some memories, didn't it? When he was about 12. And his mom and daddy had to hunt him up. Been, been missing for a day or so and they had to go all the way back to Jerusalem to hunt him up and found him over there talking with the lawyers and the scribes and then these people in the, it's high up and they was amazed at the wisdom he had at 12 years old I guess it brought back some memories didn't it they said son we've been looking all over the place for you 12 years old. He said, don't you know that I got to be about my father's business? He was then too. Glory to God. Amen. I said, glory to God. Amen. And here as he stands before Pontius Pilate about to be crucified, he said, I'm about my father's business. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. Man, that stirs me. Willie witnessed a good confession. He said, I'm here. I could, I could do some things different. He said, but I got to do what God wants. I'm here. Now, I'm paraphrasing. He said, I'm here to give my life. It's a ransom for many. I'm going to pay the price of every person in the whole world. I'm going to redeem them with something that is so precious. There's not enough money in the world to redeem them. So I've got the only thing that can redeem them. And that's my life. And my blood. They're that, they're that costly. It's going to cost this much to get them. Ain't that amazing? Ain't that amazing? 
Man, God could have spoke to this earth, earth and said, cough up every diamond and every chunk of gold and, and everything that was worth anything, and it still wouldn't have been enough to buy and to redeem us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And he could have gathered it all up and said, here's what I'm giving for. He could have emptied heaven of all that it says it's made of and said, this is what I'm giving for them. And it wouldn't have been enough. He said, it's going to cost more than that. <laughs> Amen. So he took his son. He took his life's blood. It took him being beaten and dying. Amen. And through that, he ransomed us. He bought us back. He paid the price. Glory. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Now, who don't want to know a God like that? I'm an atheist. You are. Psh, don't be proud of it. Amen. You ought to want to know God. Yes. Amen. I said amen. You know, some of you ought to quit running. Quit your running. Quit your running, I said. You might be like Jonah. Get on old ship. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving here. <laughs> hey, I'm, I bought me a ticket. I'm going that way. God wants me to go that way. I'm going that way. Amen. And you could get on a ship and go to the furthest island that's known to man. Get on there and sit down next to an old coconut tree and God looking around the coconut tree and say, Hey! Hey! You know, how did you get here? I'm everywhere. You can't run from him. Amen. How you doing? <laughs> That's what he'll do. He won't give up on you. <laughs> Amen. So Jonah said he's going to run. He did. He did run. He didn't get very far. Now he was important. It was important for him to go to Nineveh and talk to them people. God's getting ready to destroy that city. He's going to destroy them. He said he was going to destroy them. And their last chance was for Jonah to go talk to them and say, God said, thank God for preachers. God said, amen. Thank God for men of God that said, God said, amen. And most of you know the story. They was having a terrible time on the ocean, in the water, wherever they was. And, you know, it's something, you read some of these things, maybe you don't understand them, but they knew some, something was wrong. They knew some, somebody here or something going on with somebody. We wouldn't be going through all this. Ain't that amazing? And finally, Jonah spoke up and said, it's me. I'm running. I'm running. They threw him overboard. He said, the only way it's going to stop for you is you throw me overboard. They said, we don't want to throw you overboard, preacher. He said, the only way it's going to stop. Throw me. Toss me. Sure enough. And said, a big fish swallowed him up. Somebody said, I don't believe that. Why don't you? It's in the Bible. <laughs> there ain't no fish can swallow a man and him survive. Well, if God, the Bible said that God prepared a fish. Well, I reckon if God prepared one, why? We might have satellite television and radio and refrigerator and food and stuff in the refrigerator and everything. If God prepared one, I reckon, couldn't he? <laughs> a nice bed. <laughs> Well, he said he prepared him. Now, I know he didn't have all that in him. 
But if God prepared one, I reckon it'd be all right. But it said, as he was three days and three nights in that fish's belly, after that, he spit him up. He spit him up out on the bank. He spit him up. And he said he made a three days trip in one day getting to Nineveh. Now, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> this, this preacher man's heart was changed. Now, he wasn't running from God now. He's running to do what he told him to do. In so much. Now, I tell you what, it's hard to cut a journey down by two days when it's three days to get there. Man, I mean, that, that guy was moving on. He had some help. He had some supernatural help. It wasn't natural. I mean, he was moving. I guess he's making up for lost time. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it was two days or, or longer that, you know, that he's needing to make up. Time's going to run out. The clock's ticking. Praise God. And when he got there, he preached so strong and so, so full of conviction, knowing that what God said was going to happen was so uh, uh, convincing that every person in that city repented. From the king on down to everyone, Everyone wouldn't even let their animals eat. Said, you're not eating. Everybody got in sackcloth and ashes and repented. Now, amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Because of one preacher, man. Yeah. A preaching what God said. Right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I think that's awesome, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Now, <clears throat> this fact... The good fact of faith. Now, it's a good fact. And I think that we need to learn how to fight. A lot of people who went to church for a long time, they, don't, they still don't know how to fight. They're fighting the wrong thing. A lot of people fighting each other. Amen. But it's not talking about fighting each other. It's talking about fighting the good fight of faith. One of the biggest things that, that he's talking about is laying hold of something. The devil's trying to steal God's word from us. He's all time. He's not going to give up. He ain't going to give up and quit. Some people say, well, you know, I just, I just keep on uh, uh, resisting and you're going to have to keep on. That's the way it works. Don't think the devil's going to give up. He ain't got nothing to lose. He's done. He's done. No matter how dirty he treats you, he's done. Ain't no help for him. He's not going to, he's not going to end. God is his enemy. Anything that God made is his enemy. And that's made us his enemy. Amen. And he come to steal God's word, and the moment God's word drops into your heart, he's there to get it. Now, we're not trying to give him no glory, but we're telling you his motive of operandi, his M.O. That's how he works. So, the, the good fight of faith is to take God's word and don't let it go. Yep. And don't let it go. Right, Amen. Amen. Don't let it go. You take what God said and you take that into your heart. Yep. And you say, this is what he said. And whatever he said about anything, that's what I want to accept. And whatever that is, and there's thoughts or anything coming that's contrary to that, I'm, going to, I'm fighting the good fight of faith to hang on to what God said. And resist the thing that's, that he didn't say that the devil's trying to do. What he's trying to say and, and tell us all the time. I don't care how much healing scriptures you hear. He'll say, you, you're going to die what your daddy died with. Yep. He won't stop. You run him off. 
He'll come back after a while, but don't, he ain't going to stay away from right, right on and on. Amen. And some people will come along, they'll, they'll talk after him all the time. I guess we all get that, don't we? Somebody said the other day, well, we're just living on borrowed time. I didn't borrow no time, did you? And if I did borrow some off of God, it'd be good. What do you mean by that statement? Borrowed time. We're just living on borrowed time. What do you mean? Never know. That's, that's people's favorite phrase. Never can tell. Well, you can't tell because you don't know what God said. It's hard. To, it, it, it's difficult. It's all right to preach it from the pulpit, but it's, but it's difficult to talk to them like that. I don't know that we should. But we can preach it from a pulpit. No Christian ought to go around saying, well, you never can tell. What's that supposed to mean? You never can tell what? Well, you just never know. They used to say back through the years, never can tell when that big old death thing is going to, going to come down and just swoop you out of here. Well, pardon me. I reckon if he does, he'll have to come through God. He'll have to come through his blood. He'll have to get my faith before he does. And guess what? He ain't getting it. Hey, you talking about having to put up a fight? He'll be the one having to fight. <laughs> Brother, I wouldn't talk that way. I know you wouldn't. Because you've been in one of them old religious churches and you don't know nothing. You've been listening to these old religious preachers, been listening to the devil, and they won't tell you no truth about it. You get a hold of the truth, you can, you can learn something after a while, and you can be like, like David, right. the patriarch David, and say, my heart is fixed, and I'm trusting in the Lord. And I'll say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I ain't worried about some old death angel. He said, he said, I'm not afraid of evil tidings. I'm not afraid of bad news coming. He said, I've got my heart fixed. I know who my God is. Amen. Now, if you'll get in the Word just right, you can start talking that way. That's what I want. Don't you? Well, Jesus paid a big price for us to go around saying, Ah, you never can tell now. You just never know. You just don't know what the will of God is. You know, it's different for one person than it is another. Won't you read and find out what it is? Won't you read and see what it is? Praise God. I said praise God. You know, if it was for some people, the, the devil would be out of business. He ain't got nothing to steal there. He done got it all. He just goes back every now and then and check and see if there's anything new and there ain't nothing there. There ain't nothing to do here. There ain't no word there to steal. <laughs> we ought to have all kinds of stuff for him to try to steal. We ought to be so full of the word of God he don't know where to start. And every time he does start, well, all, he, all he finds is resistance. And said, I can't do nothing with them people. I can't do nothing with them. I try. Amen. Amen. Don't you think we ought to be like that? Amen. 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 Turn to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. So, I, I want us to, to learn how to fight. Learn how to fight the, the, the good fight, the, the kind of fight that God wants us to fight. Are you hearing? Yeah. Hebrews 11. I want us to learn how to fight like God says wants us to. He wants us to take his word and hold on to it. And every time that anything that is contrary to that word, now listen to me, listen to me. Anytime anything is contrary to that word, to what God said about you or any situation about you, it is to be resisted. It's to take what God said about you and embrace that. And anything that any other thing says other than what God's word says to you ought to be rejected. 
I said, no, I'm not having that. No. You may have to say no a whole lot. I said, amen. 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 I mentioned a scripture this morning before we go here in James. James 4. Uh, he said, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he'd flee from you. Now, we need to really get that straight and, and learning how to submit ourselves to God. One way of saying that's yielding. Uh, yielding yourself or, or by your own will placing yourself under God's authority. Yielding to Him. Letting Him speak to you. Letting Him guide you and, and do these kind of things. And then you'll get in a position where you're able to resist the devil. Amen. I said amen. Well, one translation, uh, matter of fact, of God's Word in James 4, 7 says, so place yourself under God's authority. That's the God's Word translation. The, N the NLT says, so humble yourselves before God. You remember it's the humble that gets the grace. The proud gets resisted. We don't want to be proud. We want to be humble. Amen. Now, it says, on the, on the latter part of that, where it says, resist the devil, he'll flee from you, the Amplified Bible says, says this, says, stand firm against him. Stand firm against him. It's all right. Stand firm against him. Now listen to another translation. The CEB says, and he will run away from you. Do you believe that? But I like this kind of language. If words mean anything, that's exciting. I, I want to be the kind of person that words mean something. Not just a bunch of words mixed up and, oh, you know, nobody can understand nothing. Well, sure you can. Who can know the will of God? Who can know God? Sure you can. He said we could. I said he said we could. He wants us to know him. The devil's the one putting all that stuff out there. The CEB says he will run away from you. The message says, listen to what the message says. Which the message is, message is pretty out there, but he says some good things sometimes, I think. It says, yell aloud to the devil and watch him scamper. Amen. Now, now remember, this is after you have submitted yourself to God. This is, a, this is a lifelong process. But having submitted, you can do that. And the Young's literal says, stand up against the devil. Stand up against him. That's right. And he will flee from you. Now, if we want to learn how to fight and learn how to do these things, this will bless you. Amen. There's so many Christian people tonight that think that they can't do anything about the devil. They think that. They've been told that. Yeah. Well, it's been a lie. You can do something about the devil. The Word of God says you can. I said amen. amen. Praise God. And I want to know those things. Amen. Right. I want to know that I don't have to leave this life early. Right. I want to know that sickness and disease does not belong to me. I want to know that healing and health belongs to me. I want to know that, that Jesus became a curse for us. And that he became poor so that we might become rich. I ain't talking about a whole bunch of money. But I'm talking about rich. To know God. To know him. Amen. To have all of our needs met. To know him. And be blessed. Amen. I want us to know that the things of God belongs to us. And if we don't know what they are, then how in the world would we know what belongs to us? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Brother Hagen told a story one time. This woman 
and I think she might have been, it doesn't matter what color she was, is a woman that had stayed with a, a very wealthy person, cooked and cleaned, took care of her, kept house. She was her maid, stayed with her. Well, she had died. The, the woman, the rich lady had died. And this woman couldn't read or write that stayed with her. And she staying somewhere, and I don't remember, some little old beat-up house and didn't have any food. And she was sick. And, and they, uh, or some people come to see her, and they looked on the wall. And she had framed this little thing that this woman left her. She would framed it and hung it up on the wall. And one of them fellows got to looking at it, and he said, uh, he said, where did you get this? And so the woman that I lived with so long and took care of her said she, she left it to me. He said, do you mind if I look at this a little closer? She said, no. Well, he got to looking at it. And she had left that woman a whole bunch of money and a nice house, and she didn't even know about it. And she was laying there, didn't have food, didn't have hardly anything, in bad shape. And she sta she sit she's sitting there, she's, she's living now with something hanging on the wall that belongs to her, and she don't even know it. Sad to say, that's a lot of Christian folks. They're living way, way below God's privileges, right. God's blessing. What, what, what Jesus came to do. Living way below. Going around sick. Going around with diseases. And, it, and all the time, God's will said, by his stripes you're healed. That's right. Don't even know what that belongs to them. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to know what belongs to me. I want to know what belongs to me. I want to know that I have the authority in the name of Jesus to say, Satan, you ain't working here. That's right. That's right. I resist you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you leave my home. That's right. You get out of this body. That's right. Amen. Don't you? Yes. Now this, I'm going to tell you, the religious church is bankrupt. They're bankrupt. That's right. They have nothing to offer. But God's people, His real people does. Yes. Amen. I'm glad I'm on the real side. Amen. I'm glad I'm in the light. That's right. So Brother Gross, you sound like you're bragging. No, I'm just glad I'm in the light. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we can know some things. That's why it's so important for us to come to church and to listen to the good word of God and wherever that you, you know, are led to listen to it and stuff. You, you need to feed yourself every, all the time. All the time. No, I mean not all the time, but often. Somebody used to say we'd feed our bodies three square meals a day and one, and spiritually feed them one cold snack a week. Well, that ain't going to work, is it? No. No, let's feed our spirits as much as we feed our bodies. Yes. It'll be strong too. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory. I'm excited about the Word of God. Praise God. It's awesome, ain't it? I said it's awesome. I said it's awesome. Amen. Now, let's look at Hebrews 11, 11 and we'll try to continue on here. 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. And for by it, which is faith, the elders obtained a good report. Now, we got a whole chapter of elders. A whole chapter of them. Talks about each one of them. And it says, they obtained a good report. Now, 
the real faith in God and real faith in his word will change any report that's not like his report. I want you to hear that. Real faith and real faith in God will change any report that's not like God. It'll change it. That's how they obtained it, yeah. through faith. I don't care if the doctors give you a bad report. He's not the last one to say so. He's not the last one. The doctor's not against us. We're not against them. Somebody said one time, said, said, well, and we have these old religious guys that don't know no better. I'll try to make it lovely as I can. Trying to tell people, said, well, just quit taking your medicine and God will heal you. If you quit taking your medicine right now, you'll die. I said, you'll die. Because you're not in faith. And I said, well, I said, when God heals them, they won't need their medicine no more. I said, when they get healed, they won't need it no more. Stop, stop in taking your medicine. Ain't got a thing in the world to do with God healing you. Nothing. It won't get you healed. It may cause you to die. And it depends on why you stop taking your medicine. If you've done it in faith and real faith, it'll work. But if you're just doing it because you think God won't heal you because you're taking your medicine, don't stop. Take your medicine. But you can take it in faith. But you need to believe God. Amen. I said amen. Praise God. We have all these, these ideals out here that didn't come from God. That's why it's so important to have good preachers and good teaching. So we'll know what God said. Yeah. So to, 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 to get in there and, and divide these things and, and separate them. They, this goes over there. <laughs> amen. This goes over there. Yeah. That's wrong. That, that belongs in that pile. Hey, this is truth right here. That's junk. That's garbage. That's religion. Amen. <clears throat> he said, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Listen to that. They were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. But according to Romans 1, they testify to the fact of who made them. And that's Almighty God. Amen. Amen. They testify to the fact that one that was unseen made them. Praise God. Glory to God. And it says, so they are without excuse. Well, you'll find out one day that every one of us will be without excuse. We have all God's handiwork. Wonderful, wonderfully made. Still operating, just like he said at the beginning. Amen. Time is not one second off. Isn't it amazing? I said, isn't it amazing? Praise God. Now, verse 4, and here's where I kind of wanted to go to, is what a few minutes we got left. He says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now, here is where we're going to see these witnesses, these elders obtaining faith, a good report by faith and through faith. Now, here he says, Cain. Or Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it being dead yet speaks. Now let's, let's turn over there and look at that. It's in Genesis chapter uh, 4. Let's, let's read, see if we can figure out what he said he did it by faith. Let's see if we can see that in there. Genesis chapter 4. Verse 
says verse 1, 4, 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, I kind of like that phrase. There's a lot of messages could come from that. Now, we're not going to talk about that, but in the process of time, or after a while, man, things can change after a while. Let's quit. Let's stop looking at this old temporal stuff going on. Amen. Amen. And let's look at God's Word, and it'll change these things that we're looking at. It'll cause them to line up with it. Be just like God wants it to be. I want God's will to be done, don't you? Yes. Amen. So in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very raw, and his countenance fell. Now, how can you get out of that that there was faith involved? You can't just see it right off, can you? It just says Abel brought, I mean, Cain brought his fruit. God didn't like it much. <laughs> fruit of the ground. And Abel brought his and God liked it. What's that got to do with faith? Well, that's not the whole picture. I said, that's not the whole picture. Was it wrong to bring, uh, instead of an animal, was it, was it, was it wrong to bring the fruit of the ground, vegetables, and so on and so forth? No. It's where it's in the law that those were required. It was required that they do that. Well, what's wrong with this picture? Cain's are bringing some. Abel's bringing some. <laughs> I can't see no faith in that. Can you? Well, if we look at it just a little closer now, we'll see what happened. He said, Abel, let me see here again. In the process of time came to pass, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. And we're seeing a difference now. Now other translations say that he brought the firstborn of his flock and he gave the best parts to God. He brought the fat, the best parts, and he gave it to God. He said, this is the best I got. The best I've got. He didn't say that about Cain. He just brought some. Now, now hold on a second. Some other scripture in the New Testament said that Cain's, Cain's ways were evil. He was practicing those ways. You might have went over in, in the barn if they had one and seen all the nice stuff he had. Nicer stuff he had. And maybe he didn't take his nice, the nicest thing he had to God. He might have said, mm, I'm keeping that for myself. I'm not giving that. Mm -hmm. Well, God knows that. And like Keith Moore said one time, Abel might have went out into the field and he started looking over the sheep and he was looking for the right one. And there's Fluffy. There is Fluffy. I mean, look at her. Won the county fair three years in a row. <laughs> yeah, won the county fair and everything. Look at her. Man, ain't she pretty? 
that's the best thing I got. It'd be her. Now that's what God saw. That's right. Now this is the faith that Abel, he, he exercised that. And he exercised respect toward God. That God, I'm not giving you, I'm not giving you the least. That's right. I'm giving you the best. That's right. And God said he counted this as righteousness as well toward Abel. Amen. Now listen to this. Here's something very important. Very important. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel. Respect unto Abel. And to his offering. But unto Cain and to his uh, offering, he had no, not respect. And Cain was very wroth, And his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now that's not the best translation here. Listen to a different translation because our time is about gone. This is uh, the GNB said, If you had done the right thing, you'd be smiling. But because you have done evil, sin is crouching at the door. It wants to rule you, but listen to what God said to him. But you must overcome it. You must overcome it. Amen. Yes, you must overcome it. Amen. Well, our time's gone. We'll pick it back up later. Thank you for watching. I love you. God bless you. Hope you've been blessed by it. Just, just stay in God's Word. Stay in faith. Amen. And watch God work for you. Until next time, I'm Kenneth Gross along with my wife, Brenda. This has been God's Word for today. God bless. Hold on. Hold on. Keep believing. Be strong. Thank you for tuning in to God's Word for Today with Kenneth and Brenda Groves. Send all correspondence to 968 West City Down Road, Keeney, Kentucky, 40737. Or call 606-528-4671. We invite you to watch live at www.thegospeleagle.com. The Word of God will build you up and give you His inheritance. Call us with your prayer request at 606-528-4671. Thank you for your support.